It's a long, long run to the palace in the sun. With hopes and dreams, our ship will cross the sea to the whole new world. These are words I don't think I could ever forget. The concept of an MMORPG was still foreign to me in the early 2000s, and most of my time was spent playing games with my brothers in the middle of the countryside. There wasn't much around us, and although games offered me the ultimate escape to foreign lands I could explore, Fantasy Star Online brought that to an entirely different level. Now I could travel to foreign lands and talk to people across the world I never would have had the chance to otherwise. And coupled with a beautiful and immersive game I had been playing offline for a few months, my gaming experience was completely reinvented when my adventure took to the web. There was something surreal about the planet Regal that seized the explorer in me right away. Forming up parties, whether online or with my siblings, was very enjoyable, and the diverse areas the game offered really satisfied the explorer in me. However, what was most interesting to me was that people often didn't want to play the same levels I did. Episode 2 took me by the heartstrings immediately, and it was by far my favorite of the two episodes. Yet, most people online kept to episode 1 due to the faster experience rates and the number of enemies. Most people discarded the sense of adventure episode 2 offered, but I relished in it. I was captured by its beauty, and of all the amazing places within the second episode, Gal Deval Island was my favorite. Gal Deval Island is towards the southern side of Planet Regal. The island itself is breathtaking in all honesty, and in my eyes, it was a graphical marvel for the year it came out. It was a culmination of all the cool exotic places I had ever wished I could visit while growing up. All those travel shows I binge watched over the years were all thrown into one giant cauldron and were cooked up into the ultimate level. As a hunter, you were sent down to this area to look for Heathcliff Flowen at the event of the first episode. This quest takes you all over the island as you unlock entry logs that begin to piece together the story. From fighting plant monsters to spellcasting apes, there's plenty of deadly creatures that inhabit this diverse region. To add to the mix, this region in particular was more difficult than anything included in the first episode of the game. The unique enemies of episode 2 were more resilient and oftentimes inflicted more damage than the first episode's counterparts. I believe this is why this area was often unexplored when people played online, simply because it was too hard for the rewards it gave in comparison to episode 1. However, this is also what made me treasure this area deeply. When we first got Fantasy Star Online, we didn't play it all the way through. It was actually my older brother's game, and as such, he wanted to be the first one to clear its various areas. That may sound a tad silly to put a ban on your younger siblings from beating a game before you, but we always ended up beating games before him simply because we had more free time. So when he would buy a game, it was only right to let him finish it first. And you know, we would often watch each other play too, and with Fantasy Star, we often jumped into the fray alongside each other. Watching my older brother play solo through Galdaval Island was such a cool experience for me as a kid. His character was far stronger than us and could cope with Episode One's standards, but he got thrashed on this island due to how much more difficult the creatures were. This would only grow worse upon discovery of the seabed, the final level in the game. However, during my brother's adventure, I became hooked by the magic of this island and I couldn't wait to give it a whirl myself. The island of Galdaval is actually broken up into three regions all tied together by a main control center area. The jungle area focused primarily on the plant creatures of the island, and it seemed to be their resident domain. This area was absolutely stunning in general, and the design of the jungle was amazingly executed. Water flowed down the paths you trudged along, and would often get stuck within the pockets of the jungle's earth. The feeling this area instilled made me want to be someone who traveled the world, someone who sought out nature's beauty and recognized it for all its magnificence. While sitting in this jungle, I would think about how someday I need to travel to Fraser Island, which is just off the east coast of Australia. When I was older, wiser, and established in life, I would have to go there. Now, Galdaval reminded me of Fraser Island. And this island in particular was something I had discovered while watching the Crocodile Hunter as a kid. The Island of Time was the name of the episode, and the beauty of Galdaval Island was parallel to what I remembered about the Sand Island in our world. My time spent exploring a Fantasy Star was simply me living vicariously through a game to experience an island on our planet 
that I had been fascinated with since the late 90s. But even beyond that burning desire, Gal Daval offered so much more. Besides the jungle, they were the mountain and seaside regions, which all held their own beauty respectfully. The mountain area was my least favorite of the bunch, but even saying it like that sounds inaccurate because I still really liked it. The views of the coast and surrounding areas were definitely stunning, but the constant battles with the magic casting primates drained your healing resources quickly, especially if you play as an android like I did. The seaside area though was very special to me. And not just because it was the most beautiful in-game sea landscape I had ever witnessed before. Sure, Super Mario Sunshine captured an amazing island aesthetic, but graphically, I had never witnessed something so breathtaking in a game. Even going back to it today, I'm still amazed at how well they crafted the beauty of this beach and coastline for the year it came out. But like I was saying, exploring this surreal coast wasn't the only reason why I cherished it so much. Later on, after Fantasy Star had been out for a while, they released a quest that was simply about resting on the beach. It was designed to be played in the dwindling hours of summertime, knowing all well that players would be returning to school or college soon after. The quest placed you on the beach at night with a bonfire just to converse with your friends. It kind of felt like an exotic digital camping trip, something you could get away to in the hours of the night and just hang out with your friends from all over the world. We were all united under the stars, just relaxing fireside while chatting away. In that moment, the feeling was profound. The starry skies, the fireworks, the warmth of the fire. Although it was all digital, it left a lasting impact. You see, the sad thing about MMOs is sometimes your friends log out, and they never log back in. They quit playing, and life takes them in different directions. To all of us, that's what this beach symbolized. It was about a crossroad in life. We were young, all eventually going our separate ways, and ultimately bonded by one interest, the game. The friends you make online eventually fade away, and you are left pondering how their life was beyond that moment. That moment, where all the stars aligned, and we all sat fireside in a digital landscape never to cross paths again. It makes you wonder, where are they now? It's been 15 years since we last sat on that beach. How have their lives played out? And for a moment, the feeling is sad. We've grown up, and more than likely, we will never meet these people again. The game we used to play together is no longer officially active online. And to top things off, even the quest which allowed us to hang out on the beach at night was only seasonal. It faded from the game before the game faded from the players. This was during a time where social media wasn't really a thing, so your only point of contact was in game. Once that stopped, everything stopped. The beauty of this island reflects this deeply for me. When exploring it again for the sake of this video, I felt a distant comfort remembering the times I shared with fellow players exploring this digital wonderland. The times my brothers and I battled out in the jungle and united to take it on together on the hardest difficulty. The times we fought the boss griffin over and over again because their lightning was simply one hit us. These are the memories that define Fantasy Star Online for me, and this island will continue to be a place I cherish deeply. This is why Galdaval Island will forever be one of my pixel portals. I have so many memories of Fantasy Star Online, and I hope this video kind of shared some of those with you. There's a lot more I want to do on this topic. But um, Galdaval Island was a, a very important area for me. I just hung out there with friends. And just online in general for Fantasy Star was monumental for me being the first MMORPG I actually played. Even chilling in the lobby was so much fun. And I know there's you know, private servers and stuff like that that host um, you know, small communities. But uh, I just want to spend time and really dive into this area because I often feel like even Fantasy Star itself is often neglected. So I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of my pixel portals. But now that I share that with all of you, I'd love to hear about your own experiences. What was your favorite place in Fantasy Star Online? Do you have any fond memories about playing the game with friends? And if you played online, do you ever think about what your old friends are up to today? I'd love to hear your story, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You can always shoot me a tweet or hit me up on Discord as well. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this nostalgic voyage through an exotic island. 
If you'd like to join me on my YouTube voyage and continue to recall the memories from our past, then the subscribe button is just what you're looking for. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers. You've made it to the end of the video, but wait, your quest isn't over yet. If you like what I do, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue to make videos for all of you. There's also a slew of other videos on my channel too. So regardless, I hope you enjoy.